Hey, in this video I want to show you how I create the handles for my mugs in a bit more depth than I have done in previous videos. From the outside, handle pulling definitely looks like a strange and maybe somewhat of a complicated process, but in actuality it's quite simple and barely requires any tools whatsoever, other than your hands, water, the serrated kidney and a little bit of slip. I start off with some very soft clay, which I wedge up well and then cut it into a more manageable size. This block of clay is where we're going to pull all our blanks from, which later become our handles. I shape it into a roughly conical shape, with one end larger than the other, which provides a good end to grip from as I pull. Once I've got a good shape, I can begin pulling. I use my right hand to cover the piece in water, and then firmly pull from the top of the block all the way until the end. In many ways this process is a lot like throwing a pot. Whenever I pull, the amount of pressure that I use stays constant from top all the way to bottom. I don't suddenly increase my grip, which might cause a thinness in the handle which might break the length and I don't suddenly change speeds. Speed needs to be consistent and even. My aim here is to create one long length of clay which is totally even the entire way so I can portion it up into smaller handle blanks which are later individually attached to the mugs and pulled again. The more consistent this length of clay the more consistent your handles will be to one another later on but if it's your first time pulling handles the main focus is to get nice even lengths. It doesn't matter so much if they're all the same size or not. I then lay them out on the edge of a board, or you could use the edge of a table too, and I snip them off just with the side of my thumb. Creating a nice flat, clean break on one end of them will help us later on, so the neater that part is, the easier it will be to attach them onto the mugs later. And at this point they can touch each other. Each one of these lengths will be taken and attached and pulled again, so any fingerprints or if they stick to one another really isn't a problem. Whenever I'm handling mugs, I'll always pull all of my blanks at the beginning of the session, and I'll always pull 5-10 to 10 more than I need, just in case I ruin a few along the way. I suppose the key point to remember when pulling is that moisture is completely essential. If both the clay and your hand becomes too dry, your hand will stick to the clay as you pull and you'll tear off the entire length below. So as soon as I feel either getting too dry, I'll just dunk my hand in the water and start pulling again. This process is really like learning to pull the walls of a clay up when you're throwing a pot for the first time. It feels strange, it feels unusual, but after enough time you'll kind of get the knack for it and you just simply have to invest the time into it to learn how to do it. Once I've pulled all my blanks, I often layer them all up on top of each other. This is because the wood underneath quickly draws out the moisture in them, drying them out. And ideally, I want these handle blanks to be as soft as possible when I attach and pull them again. In the hotter months I'll even wrap them up in plastic tightly and spray them constantly with water as I'm working throughout the day. If their outsides dry out, they become a lot harder to attach nicely so keeping the clay in the right condition is imperative. But at the moment in the autumn, I can get away with just giving them a little spray every now and then. The mugs at this stage are leather hard, but just on the firmer side of leather hard. You want to be able to squeeze the rim and there not be much movement, yet you don't want there to be any sign that the vessel is starting to turn bone dry. I then lightly score the area where the handle will be attached with the serrated kidney, and then dab, not brush, a bit of slip over the scored area. This essentially acts as a kind of glue, and helps to make the join between handle and mug incredibly strong. I wipe clean the area where I put down the mug and peel away one of the handle blanks to prepare it for attachment. I lightly grasp the blank in one hand while tapping the other with a finger. This flares out the clay and will provide us with material that we can easily blend into the body of the mug, creating a solid, firm join. I then take the handle from the back and attach it to the mug with two fingers inside the vessel just to brace it as I push it against it. As the amount of pressure I use to push it against the mug could easily distort it. As I'm pushing the blank on, I wiggle it and kind of rub it into place so the clay really welds to each other. Then with a dry finger, as you see here, I blend in the clay from the flare into the body of the mug, making it nice and smooth. I then cover the entire handle with water and begin the pulling process again, this time working in a much more delicate way. You'll notice as I pull that I rotate the position of my hand from side to side pulling with different orientations of my hand and using the crease between my thumb and index finger to act as a kind of template for the wetted clay to run through which gives it a nice even shape. If you were to continuously pull with just one shape of the hand you'd end up with a handle that's kind of lopsided and not particularly even. Once I've got it to sort of a rough length and thickness I use my thumb to pull in some grooves into the back and sides of the handle. This thins it further and also creates nice channels for my glazes to pull in. The length is then angled downward and attached to the base. With this join I don't need to score and slip it, as the pressure I can apply and the angle at which I can smudge in the clay either side means the join is much more secure. 
than that of the top. That applies for this type of handle and this type of clay too. If your handles are protruding in different ways and different angles, you might have to treat the joins differently. Then, with a wetted finger, I just go over the handle to neaten it up, to remove any of the pulling marks, and to just make sure the shape is 100% how I want it. As my handles join so low, there's a chance some of the clay that's smeared in to create the join goes over the base, but I'll clean that up later, like you'll see at the end of the video. Once you've learned this skill, pulling handles in this method is actually really quick. There's no extruder you need to keep clean, you're not having to wait for the handle shape to dry out before you attach them. You can just pull them, attach them, pull them again, and that's it. And there's virtually no cleaning up to do afterwards. Once again, I take the blank and I carefully grasp it with my left hand. You don't want to deform the length by gripping it too firmly, so it's really only enough just to keep it in place. I then quickly tap out the clay on both sides to create a nice flare all the way around one end of the handle blank. And again, taking care not to deform it, I push this clay into the mug really firmly. At this stage, you'd want to be able to pick up the piece as it is and the handle blank not simply fall off. I then blend in that extra clay before beginning the pulling process again. I used to really hate making handles like this. In college, it was one of the tasks I never really looked forward to and it really took jumping in the deep end when I started my apprenticeship with Lisa Hammond where I had to pull thousands of these things before I started to like it. With each pull of the clay, I try to get my hand as high up on the handle as possible, right up close to where the mug wall is. Once there, I squeeze and I pull throughout the entire length of the handle, all the way past the handle length, if that makes sense. You don't want to release the pressure too early, as if you do so, you can end up building a lump at the end of the handle. And eventually, as this lump grows in size, you'll pull and your handle hit into the lump and you'll tear away the whole thing. The best thing to do if you notice this has started to develop is simply to snip away the lump at the end of the handle. And in a way, this is why I prefer to work with handle blanks that are perhaps a bit longer than I need, as if there's anything wrong, I can just remove the end and continue pulling. It's better having too much handle, as you can always shorten it to the right length, as opposed to having too little handle, where you're trying to stretch out a measly piece of clay into a shape that's simply too large for itself. In regard to cross-section, I try to pull my handle so they have an ovoid shape. This means that the inside edge of the mug has a slightly curved outward shape, which I think makes for a much more comfortable handle when it comes to actually holding and using it. As opposed to say a strap handle where both the outside surface and the inside surface of the handle are completely flat and their edges are very sharp. I've always felt like those types of handles just aren't as ergonomic, but to each their own. And the sheer wonder of pulled handles is the fact that they can be as varied as a thrown pot and they impart so many more handmade qualities, as opposed to say slip cast handles or molded handles, which are inevitably the same every single time. There's something almost intimate about using a handle that has been pulled by another potter, you know, a friend or a person you admire, a potter you aspire to. The clay is passed through their fingertips, their hands, and I really like that connection. Once I've pulled all the handles on a batch of mugs, I'll put them aside and I'll let them dry out for half an hour or so before I move on to cleaning up their bases. And this is something I do with most handled forms as during the process of attaching the handle, you're moving the vessel on the table, you're picking it up, putting it down. And in that process, you can pick up lots of tiny burrs of clay that embed themselves into the base of the pot or even scratch the base. So to fix that, I put them back on the wheel onto a chuck, which you see here. I keep it wrapped up tightly in plastic as I think leather hard chucks stick to the clay better, holding the mug more firmly in place. I simply tap center it and then attach it to the wheel with three soft pieces of clay. The other benefit of using a chuck like this is, as it's so solid and so circular, when I position the mugs over top, it pushes any distortion in the rim or ovoid shape back to being totally circular, which tends to happen a lot on pots that have handles pulled on like this, as the process of pulling and yanking down that piece of clay causes the rim's circular shape to deform. As the bases of these were already turned prior to attaching the handle, all I do here is tidy them up quickly with a looped turning tool and a metal kidney just to burnish off the edges and smooth everything down once again. It really only takes about 10 or 15 seconds per mug, so it doesn't take long to finish off the entire batch. And it really adds a lot to their quality of finish, as I always believe that the base of the mug is just as important as any other part of the vessel and should be finished with just as much care. Especially as the rest of the piece is going to be covered in a veneer of glaze, the exposed clay at the base needs to be left neat and tidy. Tap centering these with the handles poking out can be tricky, but with a little bit of practice, you get used to it. I've definitely ruined a few of these mugs by tapping the handle during this process. I definitely prefer chucks though, as opposed to say grips that hold your pot in place. I have a whole range of different shapes and forms specifically made for different types of pots, all kept wrapped up in plastic, which I occasionally spray with water just to make sure they don't dry out too much. 
Then I carefully remove the mug and place it on the board. And at this stage, once placed, I won't move the mug again until it's bone dry. This is just to minimize any damage that might come to the soft clay at this stage. I've also made sure that the wear boards these mugs are going back onto are totally scraped free of any dust particles or lumps of clay that might embed themselves back into the bases. And then finally, I'll sling plastic over them and I'll let them dry out slowly for a couple of days. This allows the handle and the body of the mug to acclimatize to one another and become the same consistency. And at that point, then I let them dry out at a nice even rate. Cracks around the joins of your handles will occur in one of two ways mainly. The first is when you try and dry out the mugs and handles way too quickly and they simply can't keep up and one component dries out faster than the other. And the other reason is perhaps your initial join just wasn't strong enough. That's why I wrap them in plastic and let them dry out slowly, especially in summertime or when my kilns are running. And lastly here you see that I'm just wrapping up my chuck, nice and tight just to make sure it doesn't dry out too much for when I need to use it next. And here are some finished examples glazed in three colours, a white, a pale green and a dark green glaze. All of these were fired in a gas kiln in a reduction atmosphere up to 1295 degrees centigrade. One of the things I like most about pulled handles is they look natural. They don't look like they've been attached to the pot, rather they look as if they've sort of grown out of the mug and attached themselves again down at the base, like they've always meant to be there. Finally, I think it's worth remembering that this is just my approach to making handles. There are thousands of potters out there who do it differently, and they're no worse for it. In fact, some of them are far greater than what I can ever achieve. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.